Sometimes it's convenient to store numbers, um, not as themselves, but as counts in a frequency vector. And so I'm going to demonstrate for you what I actually mean by that. I have um, loaded up here a little dice roller, and I am using a six-sided dice. And I want to keep track of all the rolls that happen. So what I'm going to do is make a vector, and I'm going to do that here as by making a table. Um, and I know this dice is going to have possibly the numbers one through six, right? I don't want to have to, like keep subtracting one to go to the correct element of a, um, a vector that only has six elements. So I'm going to make it one too big. I'm going to make it seven instead of six. And I'm going to say here's my index values. That way I can just leave this one blank, the zero, and I can just work with these guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this thing so that instead of storing the actual numbers that get generated, I'm going to tally how many times each number is generated on my dice roller. So I've got a 5 already. So what I'm going to do is go to the location um, whose index represents the actual dice roll, and I'm going to count it. So let me do a couple of these. Okay, 3. So I'll go to the location 3, and I will count it. And roll again. Go to location four oops, and count it. Go to location four and count it. So basically what I'm doing is every time that particular index is generated, I am going to it and I am incrementing the value that the vector is actually storing. So that at the end of this process, my indices themselves, the numbering of the vector represents the actual numbers that the dice could have hold. And the numbers, the values inside each element represent how many times each one was generated. So when I look at this, I can see there were no ones, there was one two, there was two threes, two fours, and one five generated.